NCERT Science Class 6 Chapter 4 Sorting of Material into Groups Can we get into the chapter? Objects around us. We have to know what are the different objects around us. How are they made out of? What material are being used? There are a lot of material that are used to make the objects. Some objects are made out of glass, some with metal, plastic, wood, cotton, paper and sometimes with mud also they make a object. Now we have to know how we are going to group the objects together depending upon the material they are made out of. And we have to know the property if we want to group them into different sections. Property of a material. First we will see appearance. Depending upon the property of the material, it, its usage also varies. For example, I have a steel tumbler which could be used to store a liquid. If I am going to use a cloth tumbler, is it possible to store a liquid? No, right? Same way, material look different from each other. For example, wood is different from metal. And in metal itself, you do have copper and aluminium, where copper is different from aluminium. And if you want to see the luster in the metal, take a piece of sandpaper, rub it against the metal. You can see its luster. Properties of a material could also be determined using the hardness of an object. Say for example, take a material and start compressing it, squeeze it or scratch it. If you are able to squeeze it or scratch it easily, that means that material is a soft material. Example, cotton and sponge are soft material. But... Uh, if suppose I have a material and it is very hard to squeeze, then that means the material is a hard material. Example, iron. Property of a material can also be determined on the way it is soluble in any liquid, especially in water. Say for example, I take a pinch of salt or a sugar and I start dissolving it in a cup of water. Now the salt and the sugar dissolves in water. That means the material is soluble in water. For our knowledge, oxygen is a soluble gas in water. We all know that only then the fish is alive because it needs oxygen which is soluble in water. Insoluble material. There are few materials which are insoluble in water. Uh, say for example, we will take sand and chalk powder. If you are going to dissolve it in water, the sand and the chalk powder material will either float on the water or it will sink down in the beaker. That means these material are insoluble materials. So with this also we can determine the property of a material. What are the other property do you think a material will have? Sometimes, for example, uh, if we put an object in water, it starts floating. Otherwise, it sinks in the water. That is, for example, let us take a dry leaves and uh, just throw it on uh, a beaker of water. Now, the leaf starts floating on the water. Suppose I take a stone and I put it in the beaker. Uh, the stone gets sinks in the beaker. That means uh, the property of the material could also be determined by uh, an object floating in water and sinking in water. The other factors that we are, we are going to find out to determine the property of a material. Transparency is another property. Now, there are three ways in which you say whether uh, the material is going to have a transparency property in it. Uh, suppose the material is 
fully transparent that is you can watch through the material light passes through the material then you say it is a transparent material take a glass bottle and see if you can find the, the objects which are inside the bottle that means the glass bottle is a made out of transparent material now what is a opaque material a material through which light cannot pass through is called as a opaque material example a metal container an iron box uh, if you're going to take that and uh, see through the box and see if you can see the light no you cannot that means it's a opaque material translucent material a material through which light passes partially you call it as translucent material one such example is that take a piece of paper apply a little oil on it and see light through it you can find the light passing partially through it so this is a translucent material so grouping of material could be done either depending upon the similarity an object possesses or the difference between each object say for example we place all the similar objects together at home in a shelf and we also place the different objects at different places to make our life much easier same happens in a grocery shop or any other shop where say for example they place all the dal items together oil together soap items together so it makes their life much easier then for a, what else we go in for grouping grouping helps us to study the property of any material and using those property the pattern in which it appears you can do a lot of research so with that a grouping of material is of some use to us Six chapter four sorting materials into groups is completed. Hope you find the explanation easier. Thank you. Please like, share, and subscribe. We'll meet in the next chapter.